Now then, a remarkable story. You might remember seeing this incredible footage of a woman playing the violin, a violin as her brain was operated on. It's just extraordinary, isn't it? And we're very happy to have with us Dagmar Turner, who is the patient in that footage, alongside her surgeon, who carried out that operation, Professor Ashkan. Welcome to both of you. I mean, my goodness, we saw that footage and it was extraordinary at the time. It's wonderful to, to meet you. We should sort of set this story up with really your love of music since you were, were, the, were a child. This is something yes. that's been in your family for a very, very long time. That's correct, yes. And you learned to play from being a, a little girl. You could Well, I was, I think I was a very annoying child because I kept saying, even when I was like three years old, to my mum, I want to play the violin, yeah, I want yeah. to play violin. But there weren't any teachers around for annoying little girls uh. like me. Well, but I when mean... I was four, then I learned the recorder and I loved that. Mm. I became actually quite good at it, which is rare, apparently. And then I did piano when I was eight. Yeah. But my father was just too good. In, um, in 2013, yeah. you were uh, playing the violin with the orchestra, and this is the, um, the Isle of Wight Symphony Orchestra That's correct. who you worked with on, on, on the Isle itself. Um, and, uh, and, you, and you had a seizure. Yes, that's right. We were just starting a Mendelssohn overture. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. so that obviously takes you to hospital. Yes. Um, you are then checked out, and it's found that you have a brain tumour. Well, they told me I had something in my head which wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Mm. And then I was referred over to Southampton, where there's a really very good neuro, neuro, neuro department. Neuro, absolutely. That's yeah. the one, Paul Grundy, yeah. And colleague. so you had six weeks of radiotherapy, and although initially that was effective, um, yes. they, as, when you came to the end of that treatment, it actually was decided that surgery was the only option to, to remove what was there. But the interesting thing was, at the time when this was discovered, it's almost seven years ago now, mm. everybody said, sorry, no operation, maybe at a later point, but we, it's too diffuse or so. Yeah. Mm. Uh, would be too destructive. And then my uh, neuro-oncologist moved from Southampton to Guy's here in London, and he didn't tell me. Naughty. <laughs> so, um, and then we carried on, we followed him because we had a very good relationship. And despite once he called my husband, who was called Matt, he called him Phil. Oh, well, well it's a good name, that. what can we say? <laughs> exactly. So, you, you eventually go and have this operation, mm. and obviously because of your love of music, this is extremely important to you, and you'd heard about Professor Ashkan through the Brains Trust, and you knew that he was a, magi right. a musician, not magician, a musician, <laughs> um, and that, in actual fact, he would understand this desire that yes. you had, that if anything, when any work was going to be done in your brain, that you would want to protect that part of your brain that enabled you to play so beautifully. And you had heard of this before. You did, this was something that was quite well known. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, Dagmar came to me uh, and we had a very frank conversation. Uh, she said to me, look, what matters to my quality of life more than anything else is my ability to be able to continue to play violin. Can you do the operation, remove the tumour, but leave those aspects that makes me human, mm -hmm. makes me live and love what I do best? Can you preserve that for me? And we had a very frank discussion and I said, well, we can certainly try. So when... Uh... For the initial part of the operation, yes. obviously, you have to. There is some sort of fairly heavy work that goes on yes. before you can get into the brain yes. itself. So you're asleep for that. Yes, correct. Um, and then once uh, once you get to the brain, to That's where right. you have to operate on, then you wake her up. Absolutely. And correct. ask her to play the violin. Now, is it is it a case of sort of going in? Um, almost like a, a electric circuitry board. Touch something and she can't play quite so well, think, right, OK, we Absolutely. won't go there. Absolutely. It's all exactly. about mapping, remapping and remapping. So we've got probes in surgery where we can stimulate different parts of the brain and if that stimulation disrupts the function, in her case, ability to play violin or move her very dexterous fingers between one string to the other, we know that part of the brain is critical to that function. That's just and different. therefore, we have to avoid it. And of course, very dynamic because as we remove tumour, Obviously, that mapping you did 10 minutes ago becomes a historical document. Of course. You have to mm. remap, resect, remap, resect, oh, and continue the yeah. procedure until hopefully remove as much of the tumour as possible and left Dagmar as wonderful as she is. And as we can see, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a success, thankfully. When you watch that footage back and see that, how does it make you feel? It was very bizarre, actually, because when you are in the surgery, you don't know what's going on. Mm. Because lots of people have said to me, 
how did it feel to be in the surgery? And I was like, oh, I don't know, no, because no most memory, of the yeah. time actually you're asleep. Mm. And then, I mean, I, I read some papers said I was playing for three hours and I said, no, I cannot possibly have played for three hours summertime. You may have gone all mad then. <laughs> <laughs> so but how long do you, how long was she playing for? For about a couple of hours she was That's playing. That's right, about two hours. Hell of a repertoire. That's right. That is. But that is absolutely, I mean, it is, it is, it's fascinating. How did you feel when it went viral? Uh, I was surprised pleasantly. I think it's very important. And of course, what matters to me really is that I just quite like to change the dialogue from how did he do this yes. to why he did this. Yes. yes. But that why matters a lot more to how. Okay, technically it was interesting, and of course, you all yeah. seen the footage. But why is what matters most. I think the reason we did this was to really put the patient at center mm. point well, you've of absolutely all the decisions that we made. Amazing. And it's critical, um, shared decision making, absolutely critical. Thank you for thank coming. Thank you very today. much.